All right, welcome back everybody. Hopefully uh, you're not wobbling too much to see what I'm going to reveal to you. Um, it is a, almost 11 o'clock, Saturday morning. Uh, it's already about 95, 96 degrees in the shed. Uh, been going between the uh, putting some sub-assemblies back together and working on the uh, and working on the the, the cabinet, uh, getting it prepped for a couple of more sandings. Um, what I wanted to cover with you before moving on, because uh, I did a little bit this morning that I didn't I didn't video so right now the tuner I've been playing with it trying to get this little springy thingy back in here the way they had it before and I just don't see I don't see it so anyway I modified this thing here so that it would be much simpler to do this this spring thing here I don't know why they didn't do it because it, it does come apart separate from the other thing but I think the spring stayed on the on the tuner uh, rather than in combination with the base uh, but we didn't get it locked in there so um, all the spring does is provide a little friction on the shaft the the drive shaft of the tuner the this wheel here is just solely for the indicator so yeah there's two strings and two springs well actually three if you count that one but anyway what I did was I modified it put that hole in the mount so that you could go ahead and hook it this this friction spring right here is um, not only does it put friction on the shaft but it also goes into a little groove there that normally I think a C-clip would go into to hold the shaft from coming out so it does that double function um, so I just drilled that little hole right there, hooked it in, put the shaft in, hooked that curly Q thingy. I don't know if you can see it now, but it's in there in the in the back, and it holds the shaft in position. And and then you just take a little needle nose and you put a little friction against it and push it into the hole. You have to spin this little 90 degree hook. 90 degrees <laughs> again so that it goes that way instead of that way so anyway uh, that's what I wanted to cover the other thing I wanted to cover is see if I can keep this thing in frame I don't know if this thing is going to focus but you see right down in this in this little groove here the little shiny areas in there that look like they've been chewed on well, yeah, they've been chewed on. I do that on every drive shaft for string. Um, and I use one of these little mini, mini rat tails files. And I go in there at an angle to the barrel. And I just put a little scratch mark on there. Don't have to be much, but... Sometimes you may have to put a little bit more oomph in it and put some around the barrel equidistantly from each other. And that helps grip grip that string uh, so it doesn't slip on you, even with the spring on the thing. Spring on the thing. Um, it'll, it'll help grip that string and uh, get it where it needs to go. Now all we need, all I need to do is 
index that to the closed position put this down here like that spin this around until she is just off just off the uh, this wide ass opening that's so this thing here when you tune it it goes from one end to the other so you just need to index it right in there like like so and then um, tighten it up when you're done what I would suggest first is that you take and you load your spring and your string to the drive and get it locked in and then place this on there and then do that when you're ready to put the housing the uh, the tower back on it for the push button assembly so that's all I wanted to cover on that now let's get this over here out of the way you already seen what I did with the uh, I have I have uh, calls we got all these put back on and it's lubed and ready to ready to go so um, and everything is in as it should be hopefully <laughs> you know me um, now what else was I doing I don't think I was doing anything else other than to the cabinet and uh, I'm not going to show you that right now because uh, that'll be in the next segment to this video um, I want to get it uh, shaped up a little bit more with a couple more sanding uh, sequences I still got to hit it with a, a 320 out of 400 so stand by we'll have more all right everyone it's gotten down to the end of the day it's about six o'clock i would imagine uh we're starting to get a little stormy weather in here i don't know if it's going to do anything though but it is thundering um it's still saturday uh evening way afternoon here is the finish on the, no, this is not the final finish, this here is just the first coat or the first stain for the 145 radio. Um, we got it all sanded up and we had it pre-stained and then we gave it 30 minutes and we started hitting it with color. So, um, yeah. So that is coat one of the stain yeah we got a little uh, condition right there but I'm going to blend that with toner same way up here all along the edges are going to get toner uh, a, a low light toner yeah over here is a little jiggy poo uh, that I fashioned together for putting this picture frame back together so that we can insert it in the slot uh, it was broken on this side at one lamination and it broke on this side at a different lamination and it was there was a gap starting in between another lamination so I just uh, broke it apart the rest of the way and re-glued so we got two joints over here that's got a cure and a joint over here that's got a cure and then we got to finish it out and then we got to get it finalized for stain um, we got the inside of the cabinet reloaded with finish um, what else did we do? Oh, uh, yeah. Over here. Over here. We got the, uh, 
IF cans with uh, clear coat on it. Uh, so there is that. So uh, tomorrow it looks like we might get at least two layers of clear on the cabinet. Um, I wanted to get it stained. I wasn't going to stain it until yesterday, mo tomorrow morning. Uh, but I would wait. It got to 100. It got to about 102 here, maybe. But in the shed, the shed was. Uh, I looked at it one time, and it was 100, and, about 105. So uh, we capped it and went inside, chilled for until now <laughs> we come out and yeah it's 541 so quarter six. Oh yeah uh, I was going to give you a sneak peek at the uh, the finish on the uh, chassis there that is we got the can of the transformer done And uh, so we're t tomorrow, if we got a good day, we're going to jump into this both feet and we're going to get it taken apart. So uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, hopefully tomorrow we can get a lot more done. Uh, yeah, it's starting to get a little too what well, with the uh, the moisture coming in. Uh, it's it's a little drab or starting to get a little drab. <laughs> you know, it, it, you feel uh, sticky. It's starting to feel a little sticky. So anyway, that is it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have yourself. A good rest of the weekend. <coughs> okay, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, I know in the last previous seg segment, uh, we was going to end that video at that point, uh, but it was only like 12 and a half minutes long, so I decided to just go ahead and elongate it some more with some more video today. Today is... Sunday the 23rd of June and yeah, a little after 9 o'clock out here in the shed it is uh, about 86 degrees we have some spotty clouds this morning sun is starting to peek through uh, so uh, <clears throat> hopefully we can get something accomplished before the heat comes up and uh, what I wanted to cover uh, was uh, what I did in order to get this uh, chassis ready. <coughs> Excuse my frogginess. Uh, <coughs> what we did originally was we safed off or masked off everything around this transformer can even up to the to the lip of this um, pan for the base of the uh, for the base of the uh, all of these darn things hey rah, hmm. <laughs> uh, today is starting out as usual and uh, and then we sprayed uh, we sprayed a attack coat of uh, a primer on it and we let it cure up and then we hit it with some color <clears throat> and then we hit it with more color and then we hit it with more color and that's what we got now that is the oil rub bronze metallic so uh, and then what we did was 
we let this cure up for a day and then wrapped it up in a sock down to here this pan and then uh, mask all the sockets bases um, off any of the holes that went through most of the holes that went through uh, right here so we didn't get any paint overspray into the inside of the chassis we plug these off with some of this stuff lightly moisten tear off a little piece and stuff it in here to protect that from getting any overspray notice the mouse bathroom is gone yeah it's nice and slick now moving through here we're going to leave these maskings on for right now this here um, so that we don't have to worry about <coughs> uh, getting anything stuck in it and getting any um, scratching on it or whatever we got the labelings back on the thing so what we're going to do, let me get this turned around here, rick rickus We still got our tacked in piece, well almost tacked in, and our tacked in here. Got a little overspray on that one. We're going to remove all of this stuff in here and open up these things up. And then we're going to um, start... Replacing wires and caps. So let me get my uh, let me get my um, little mat cushion out so that we can start handling this thing and flipping it around without scarring up the new finish on this on the chassis. There we go. I'll get that out of there. We'll get this other thing. Let me get take care of that, and then we'll uh, we'll be right back. All right. I got my police mat down. My cushion. We're gonna start up here in this corner, and we are going to remove this cap block right here. So. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to snip these connections here from the from the block, the cap block, and uh, now there's two connections that I'm particularly concerned with. And that is uh, these two wires right here. There's a there's a black wire and a, a white wire. The white wire is the hot lead back into the transformer from the switch. The two whites are the 120 volt lines, and the black is a, just a ground. This right here this back lugs you see there's lugs here and there's lugs here this back lug is grounded through this screw so there's two capacitors in here they both share this lug that are fastened right in there the hot comes comes up the hot lead, when I say the hot lead, I mean the hot lead from the 120 volt. There's a, there's a hot lead and a common lead. The common is usually commonly white. Uh, you look in a, in Romex or you look in, a, you look at a, in a, any box, any electrical box that has a, a fixture on it, 
you'll have a white and a black wire. Well, the black wire is generally hot, what they refer to as hot, and the white is a neutral or a common. So, the 120 volt from the power cord comes in and hooks to here. That's the hot lead. It is tied off to this side of the switch and the other side goes into the transformer. On this side, the common lead from the power cord comes in and ties to the same lug that this one is tied to. This is the common that goes in. This is the other side of your 120 volt line. That goes into the transformer. So the only two I'm going to concern myself with, generally, is the black lead that goes in, or the ground lead, that goes into the transformer, and the white lead that goes into the transformer. Why do I concern myself with it? Because generally, these women, <laughs> or I should say these uh, constructors, uh, some of them don't leave you too much lead to deal with. Uh, I, this one here, there's plenty of lead that's wrapped around and goes down and loops in there. And I could just as well, and that's the reason why I cut these, because these here are all going to be replaced. These here go into the transformer, and I don't want to snip too much uh, on these leads, because generally you may not have enough to tie back to the original point of connection. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to fire up the gun and we're going to go in here and we're just going to take these loose. We're going to desolder these. If we can get Now, see, there's just, generally, there's too much, there's too much crap on the solder connection that it's going to take a while for it to get softened up so that you can get your Your, your the solder connection loose enough to there we go finally that solder was tough and don't forget to clean off your tip uh, the tip of your tip uh, okay so this here is free to come out. We'll pull that loose. Now, keep in mind, Fico typically puts a star washer between the chassis and the block. That way, the block, I don't know why that is, <laughs> because this is where your grounding needs to be. Uh, if you're threaded into the chassis, you're grounded. So I don't know the purpose of the thing, but rem keep that in mind because if it falls down in here and gets stuck between a couple of lugs on the, s on the rectifier socket, uh, you probably won't notice it in there and it could uh, light up your life. So, uh, keep that in mind that if it comes to the, if it, there's one in there and a double check on it so uh, what we're going to do let me get set up for the next segment what we're going to do is open this up and all I'm going all I'm going to do is heat this so that it becomes pliable and it comes out of there now there are there are some on YouTube that got a little kit from somebody who developed a thing that you can push these these 
wax or this tar block out of the out of this casing uh, by drilling through uh, to the bare metal here but not through all the way through and uh, then you can heat it and then push a pin down through it that will push this block out but uh, it's a pain in the butt so let me uh, let me get this extracted and then we will show you what is inside hang on okay folks here is the thing after you extract the wax out now you I used my heat gun and it did a really nice job it didn't take too long probably about a minute and a half two minutes uh, on high and uh, which means this case case gets pretty hot so if you use one of those heat guns and everything even if you don't and you try to dig out the wax without heating it don't pry against these side walls here or the end walls don't try to you know take do not don't try and pry the things out by prying up on the thing like that because you'll you'll crack and split this case but here's one and here's the other these are supposedly are supposed to be the line filters one for the hot line and one for the neutral line or the common line uh, both of these connect to the grounded portion right here and one comes to here the other end and the other end of the other goes to the, that one that's what filters your line variant out of it your noise um, so we're going to go ahead and extract we're going to go ahead and extract these the rest of the way. Yeah. If I wasn't put, <laughs> if I wasn't zoomed in partially, uh, down here would be still in frame. So we're going to go ahead and extract these out and get them out of there and get the rest of the, in, the interior cleaned up. And then we're going to go in there with um, some Y2 caps and let me show you what those are going to look like hang on okay here's what those are going to look like two of these they're barely going to fit in there so uh once those go out you can see that no, if I held it in the right spot you can see that you know that is two of them are just are just going to fit in there and these are these are 0.01s at 250 volt uh, I bought those in bulk <laughs> I mean if I can afford them anybody else can, even those professionals out there that are gung-ho on keeping the the thing original uh, can afford a bunch of them no 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 uh, gasping for air while you're trying to drown yourself with no caps in stock well I ordered them caps they'll be in here any day well no I, I if I got a schedule to meet, well then, well I don't have to really meet it. But if I have a schedule for doing radios and making videos, I make sure I got the stock. So, now one other thing I wanted to cover with you real quick. You see here is the Philco regular Jeffo Fika Fracas 3903 ODG. Now, key that into key that into Google. Do a search on it. And what you'll get, you should get, is diagrams of everything that Philco designed with these, of every possible capacitor block that they manufactured. And it'll show you the orientation and how many caps are in the block. <laughs> 
and how they are connected. And then you can put that in your repertoire or your put that in your quiver or wherever you like sticking it. And uh, and that way you'll always have them so you can draw back on those in case you ever because some of these Philco's use up to uh, I don't know maybe six of these blocks and they're all identified by their configuration so keep that in mind so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear this out and get those safety caps in there and connected hang on all right everyone we got her done They just did uh, frick, frick, frick. Let's zoom in a little bit here so we can get this thing to focus. Focus? Yes. Okay, so where am I thinking? Think of our rickoscope. Now, here's what I did with this one. These here safety caps are just barely I mean you can see how much clearance there was in here and they will seat down far enough for the stem to still set flat against the chassis when it's bolted in now the lead diameter on these particular caps are larger than the tiny little dinky ass petite little leads that they had on their weenie ass doggone capacitors that they tarred in. <laughs> I don't know what the purpose of that was. Anyway, so I don't attempt to drill this eyelet out so you can get both of those in there. Drill you a hole to one side or the other, put your cap in to one side or the other, and then the other one you've got easily accessible otherwise you know you're going to be fighting those two into a tiny single little hole and you're going to get frustrated and I do not like to get frustrated so even though I do get frustrated but it's you know it's just habit you know so both of those come through this is your ground lug right here it comes through both of those wrap around there I gotta still go to solder them in the one on one side goes to this one and the other one on the other side goes to that one now there they are so now you know what you gotta what you gotta do with these at least these here that are right at the beginning point at the power line the other ones on the other one are going to be configured a lot differently than these and so you're going to have to go in there some might have as many as, as three cut caps in it and different configurations uh, maybe even a resistor I don't know I don't remember but I remember seeing the diagrams that they did they did um, when I googled them originally so um, that takes care of that one we're going to keep it out and put it to the side until we until we need to handle it again so any of this transformer lead that's got an exposed little uh, glitch in it is going to get a little shrink tube over it and everything we'll have to heat these wires up so we can make them pliable they are stiff I mean like real stiff like you know kind of stiff uh, stop touching it yeah okay so um, we're gonna continue on with the rest of the wires on this rectifier tube socket and any of those that got a problem we're gonna remove them and then we're gonna 
treat the capacitor issue with it and get it taken care of so that we can move into the next zone and deal with it I'm not sure if we're gonna do anything yeah we're, we're gonna take this out and get even though that is uh, braided uh, insulated wire right there and it's got that friction tape on it we're gonna take and remove the friction tape go in there and perform surgery on this vein right here and we're gonna sleeve this with some shrink tube and then we'll bring up a little bit longer shrink tube and seal it again uh, so stand by and um, it's pushing 96 degrees in the dungeon right now the sun is full uh, I think there's a spotty cloud out so I think we'll be able to get a little bit of work done before having to retire to the coolness of the of the abode not the commode the boat abode so let me get that and we'll be right back okay everyone back again we've done a little bit of work in between our last break um, we went through and we changed out some of this wires in here and added some in this one here goes up through the gaposis in here and goes up to the speaker that's one going to the speaker we had to put a little booble on there and uh, touch it up because it was rotted all the way down to the connection point same way on the primary down here we've got it repaired up we had to pull the we had to pull the uh, off on tone switch um, off on tone pot switch switch whatever and uh, because uh, the one of the lugs was kind of a little sluggish there and uh, found out that it was part of the phenolic uh, portion of the pot was broken and that was what was giving me the evil eye so I pulled it and it's being epoxied right now uh, but we got the we got the, the center center wire is that the center wire yeah uh, replaced on it uh, we got this yellow wire right here for the lamp back end down here where it feeds the hot side of the six volt line to the start of the daisy chaining throughout the rest of the chassis or the other tubes uh, what else did we do? We chopped this one short, so we left me a telltale. This is one side out to the field coil on the speaker, which the speaker already has its field coil dressed up, and the wires are on this on the speaker for here. So all we got to do is is um, get us away into here so we can get it fastened on to the existing lug on the rectifier tube. We got number 49 ECAP in and locked in. And we've been reworking the crusty old wires in here as we went along. So now what we're gonna do is start replacing the caps also from here on that way this one here that way we've already checked these resistors over here in this location and they are good thank good goodness uh, and then we're going to replace once we get this one out of here and get it replaced and get that one replaced this is replaced uh, we're going to consider going through and removing the daisy chaining on these six volt hot side 
of these tubes. I think we can get to them all with a little difficulty, hopefully not much. Uh, and then, but we're going to replace these capacitors in here and the rest of the, the crusty stuff as we go out like this here. This goes up to the center uh, lug of the uh, volume switch. And this, this blue one here, red one and the blue one, the blue one goes to the high side of the volume switch. So, it is pushing 100 degrees. Yeah, 99, 98, 100 degrees. Might as well be. Uh, and here, we're going to take a break, go in, chill down. Um, we still got to let that uh, cabinet cure up from the staining because it was, it felt a little still a little tacky this morning i want it to be since the sun is out partially i'm going to put it out in the put it out in the uh in the sunlight and let it bake for an hour or two as a matter of fact let me grab the coffee uh let me shut down my halogens so they don't put me in the pole house and we'll shut that down too, what the hell. <laughs> we don't want to go to the poorhouse too soon. Um, yeah, and I still got the picture frame for the uh, dial to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this. This stuff is nasty. So if you get it out of there, let it, let it cool. Really cool. I mean... And brush it off with a little brush, paintbrush or something like that, into a into a bucket or something, and dump it. Because you don't want to be doing this at the kitchen table, <laughs> because that stuff will get on everything. This is still a little bit tacky. I'm gonna put it out in the sun. And uh, and let it bake until it's dry, dry. There we go. Out here on my my favorite dumpster. Yeah. You can see it's already developing some little yellow there. I got I forgot I completely forgot about this over here. Uh, I forgot I put this out there th two day three days ago <laughs> and forgot about it. Uh, and now it's nice and flat. So that's the shortwave antenna for the. for the radio so that all being said and done we're gonna take a break thanks for watching we're uh, put the rest of it in the next video so see you see you soon